At 26, I married my childhood sweetheart whom I had liked since we were young. But after just a year, he started keeping a young model. I didn't say anything, just took off my wedding ring, drafted the divorce agreement, and handed it to him. He lit a cigarette and laughed at me. Divorce? What trick are you trying now? I calmly told him. Travis Howard, I want to cut my losses in time. So, please sign it. Ding! Wis Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. That day was my birthday. I was excitedly carrying the birthday cake I made myself to his company. Two young women at the front desk were huddled together gossiping and didn't see me come in. Did you see the flowers Mr. Howard sent to Iris? 999 champagne roses. Such a big bouquet, two people had to carry it into the lounge for her. She has really hit the jackpot. She just started a few days ago, and Mr. Howard already took a liking to her, how lucky. But Mr. Howard is already married. You haven't seen Mrs. Howard, Iris looks a lot like her, that's why. Halfway through their conversation, the young women suddenly saw me standing at the front desk, and their faces turned pale with fright. And Mrs. Howard? With a calm face, I walked straight in. The lounge referred to the suite on the ninth floor, which was Travis's exclusive room. He usually stayed there during lunch breaks or when working overtime. As soon as I stepped out of the elevator, I heard a clear but unfamiliar laugh coming from the suite. Mr. Howard, I've never received such big and beautiful flowers, I'm so happy. Then Travis's deep and lazy voice came out. As long as you like them, also, how many times have I told you, when it's just the two of us, call me Travis. My heart ached. I remembered our wedding day, when I sat on the wedding bed, shy and full of expectation, calling him Travis. He yanked off the tie from his neck and threw it onto the bed. Celia Murphy, who gave you permission to call me that? Don't forget, this wedding is only to not go against dad's wishes. Considering what you've done, the fact that I haven't hit you shows my good upbringing. That day I knew, his marrying me had nothing to do with love. But I thought, in this world, sincerity could move even the hardest of hearts. So for this year, I worked hard to play the role of Mrs. Howard. I learned to cook and make soup, and also studied business management. I even helped him successfully acquire and merge a large tech company. Expanding Travis's business empire further. I wholeheartedly wanted to be his capable wife and thought that one day, he would see my devotion. Unfortunately, I was wrong. Some things cannot be achieved just by trying hard. I entered the password, and the door lock clicked open. The sound of the door startled the pair inside. Travis might have had a bit to drink. His sculpted, perfect face had two unnatural red patches. At this moment, his hands were holding a pair of long, graceful legs, cradling a girl in his arms. The girl turned her head suspiciously at the sound, her face full of anger. Which department are you from? How dare you come up without reporting? Don't you know this is Mr. Howard's private lounge? Travis's expression changed slightly when he saw me. What are you doing here? I tightened my grip on the bag with the cake inside. Did you forget? Today is my birthday. Just two hours ago, he had sent me a message saying he wanted to celebrate my birthday. This was the first time since our marriage that he had shown any desire to be close to me. So I hurriedly made a cake and came over. Really? I've been too busy to remember. Besides, why come looking for me on your birthday? Whatever you want, tell the driver to take you to buy it. Can't you see I'm busy? Get out! I noticed a hint of triumph in the girl's bright eyes, and I understood everything. Upon closer look, the girl's features indeed resembled mine. Except her slightly upturned eyes had a liveliness that was in stark contrast to my current dull appearance. I suddenly shivered, as if an ice pick had pierced through my skull. I was all too familiar with that face. People in the company say she looks like me, but she, she. Her eyes were very similar to Sophia's. My twin sister. We looked like we were carved from the same mold. Except I had a tear mole at the corner of my eye. People used to say that someone with a tear mole was destined to cry a lot in their life. And Sophia's eyes were slightly upturned. Just like Iris Patel's eyes in front of me. 
Travis couldn't help but sneer at my words. Like you? Celia Murphy, don't flatter yourself. Celia Murphy? So, it's Mrs. Howard. Iris Patel greeted me with a smile, but her hands holding Travis didn't loosen at all. Today is Mrs. Howard's birthday? Why didn't you say so earlier, I didn't prepare a gift? Iris looked around and pulled a flower from the large bouquet of roses beside her, handing it to me. Here, this is from Travis. He just had it delivered to me. Take one to celebrate your birthday. She humiliated me like this, yet still smiled brightly and confidently. Because she was certain Travis wouldn't blame her. Sure enough, he just pinched her face and lightly scolded her. Don't be so naughty. It was more like honeyed words full of indulgence. Travis had never spoken to me in such a tone. Iris pouted, looking unhappy. You won't give me face even in front of your wife? When she said your wife, her expression was indescribably contemptuous. This confidence came from Travis. I looked at them and chuckled softly. 999 champagne roses, how much? A few thousand dollars? Does that make you happy? So cheap, suits you perfectly. You keep it. Iris's face changed, what did you say? Who's cheap? Travis patted her back to comfort her, then frowned at me unhappily. Celia Murphy, apologize. I looked back at him, emotionless. Celia Murphy, are you deaf? I told you to apologize to Iris. Do you think you have the right to call her cheap? In my heart, you're a hundred times cheaper than her. All the strength seemed to drain out of me. I looked down at the cake in the bag. The cream had melted, mixing with the chocolate sauce into a sticky, disgusting mess. Suddenly, I felt, what's the point of this? I threw the cake into the trash can by the door, then took out my phone and snapped a picture of them together. I won't apologize. Travis Howard, if you don't want your affair to hit the news and affect your company's stock price and this little beauty's future, come see me tonight. He sneered indifferently. You think you can force me back to you with this? You're really despicable. I shrugged. See you tonight. By the time I returned to the villa I shared with Travis, it was almost 11 o'clock. The usually eerie villa unexpectedly had a light on. I walked up to the second floor, and Travis questioned me coldly. You asked me to come back at night, but where did you go to fool around? As I got closer, he smelled the wine and the unique scent from the club on me. His face changed, and he stepped forward, tightly gripping my wrist. Where did you go to have fun? Speak! His strength was so great that it felt like he was about to crush my bones. I went to the egret club that you often visit. What's wrong with that? Today is my birthday, spending some money to buy blessings and excitement isn't too much, right? I laughed, as expected of the top club, even the waiter who cut fruit for me was so handsome, with six-pack abs and a great feel. Travis coldly spat out a few words, you're looking for death. With that, he suddenly yanked me up, carried me to the master bedroom, and threw me on the bed. I came back early for just one day and caught you fooling around outside. When I'm not home, do you directly cheat on me? He pressed me on the bed, one hand gripping both of my hands above my head, his lips pressing against my neck. His other hand tore open my stockings. I struggled wildly under him. Travis, are you a pervert? Even within marriage, without the other person's consent, it's still rape. He suddenly stopped, his eyes filled with hostility as he looked at me. Rape you? Ha. I'm not that desperate. Tell me, why did you call me back? I looked at him, who was struggling to suppress his anger and desire, and my eyes inexplicably welled up. Once, I longed so much for a kiss from him. Even a casual glance from him could make me happy for days. But he didn't know any of this. Because from the beginning, he told me that he hated me. When I was nine, Travis came to our house. It was then that I learned that the very handsome and gentle Mr. Howard from my childhood memories had gone bankrupt and jumped off a building. And Travis's mother, after selling the last valuable jewelry and gold watch in the house, ran away with someone. Leaving only ten-year-old Travis to face the fierce creditors alone. They took over the Howard house and kicked Travis out. 
My father couldn't bear it, so he paid off his friend, Mr. Howard's remaining debts, completed the adoption procedures, and brought Travis to our home. Even though he was so down and out at that time, Travis still wore his white shirt neatly. I liked this handsome and melancholic boy very much. But his white shirt had come apart at the seams. So I took my pocket money and ran to several stores on the street, finally buying him a similar one. When I returned home eagerly with the gift, I saw my sister Sophia feeding him a piece of strawberry cake with a spoon. Travis blushed, opened his lips, and swallowed the piece of cake. Sophia smiled at him. He also smiled, Sophia, the strawberry cake is delicious. I suddenly felt very angry. That piece of cake was also something I had bought in advance to welcome Travis. So I walked over and slapped the cake out of Sophia's hand. What are you eating? You can't eat that. I bought it. Sophia was so frightened that she burst into tears. And Travis, protecting Sophia behind him, looked at me with cold and hard eyes. It's just a piece of cake. I'll compensate you. Do you need to scare Sophia like that? An inexplicable sourness welled up in my chest, and my eyes quickly filled with tears. Compensate? What will you use to compensate? Even the money you eat with is given by my father. Travis's face turned pale instantly. I knew I had said the wrong thing. But just as I was about to open my mouth to apologize, Travis coldly said to me, Celia Murphy, has anyone ever told you? You are really annoying. I threw the white shirt I bought for him onto him. I hate you too. After that, Travis never spoke to me again, even though I later went to apologize to him. But the way he looked at me was still cold, without a trace of emotion. He only liked to play with Sophia. He would gently call her Sophia and gently tidy her hair when the wind blew it messy. To me, he would only call me Celia Murphy stiffly. Later, when he was 17, someone asked him, Of the beautiful twin flowers of the Murphy family, which one do you like more? He lowered his head, hesitated for a moment. Celia Murphy is too annoying. How could I possibly like her? Probably, the relationship between Travis and me was doomed from the start. He was sensitive and inferior, and I was sharp and strong. Even though I liked him since childhood, whenever I saw his disgusted eyes, I couldn't speak my mind. In our youth, even talking about feelings required dignity and pride. As if whoever bowed their head first would lose. When I grew up and learned to bow to reality, it was already too late. I held back my tears, tidied myself up, and stood up. The stuff is ready and on the table. If there's no problem, just sign it. He pulled out a cigarette and lit it, his narrow eyes full of mockery. What trick are you playing now? He spoke as he walked over to the table by the window. Divorce? Agreement? His voice suddenly trembled. What do you mean? I calmly signed my name on the divorce agreement and handed it to him. I owe you, and now I'm repaying you with my freedom. From now on, we're even. The room was silent. Only the slightly open window occasionally let in a few gusts of wind, sounding like broken sobs. Even? Travis laughed coldly. Celia Murphy, what kind of scheme are you up to now? You used dad to pressure me into marrying you. And now you want a divorce? Where did you learn this new trick? A trace of bitterness rose in my throat. No, I never. Do you dare say that dad making me marry you wasn't your idea? I didn't speak. To someone who doesn't believe me, saying more is futile. I took off the wedding ring on my hand. This blue diamond ring had been part of my mother's dowry. Later, when my father's factory went bankrupt, this rare blue diamond was pawned to pay off debts. When I married Travis, he bought back the blue diamond and made it into my wedding ring. I placed the ring in the safe. You paid to buy this ring back, so please take good care of it. In the future, I will redeem it with money. Travis looked at the dazzling ring, his face darkening further. Celia Murphy, take back your words before I lose my temper. I shook my head. Our marriage was a mistake from the beginning. Travis Howard, I want to cut my losses in time, so please, sign the papers. I handed him the pen and paper, stubbornly waiting for him to take them. 
Travis's face turned livid as he took the divorce agreement and tore it to pieces. In your dreams. I sighed. Why? There's no love between us. He laughed coldly. Of course there's no love between us. But Celia Murphy, since you forced me to marry you back then, everything now is what you deserve. Don't even think about divorce. He slammed the door and left. Leaving me alone in the empty room. Even though I wrapped myself tightly in the blanket, I still felt so cold. My head throbbed. In a daze, I seemed to see Travis again. But this time, it was 17-year-old Travis. He looked at me with the same impatient expression. Celia Murphy, what trick are you playing now? From childhood to adulthood, he always said that to me. Probably because I always pestered him, and he hated me for it. I still remember, back then, after every morning self-study session. I would go to the school small shop to buy a cup of hot chocolate and wait for him at the door of his classroom. He ignored me, so I would stand at the door of his classroom, calling his name over and over. Every time, amidst the laughter of his classmates, he would silently take the cup from my hand. I just liked watching him get flustered and helpless because of me. Later, there was one time when I had a cold. After morning self-study, I rested my head on the desk and didn't go to find him. During the big break, he cornered me in the stairwell, his beautiful eyebrows furrowed tightly. Celia Murphy, stop playing these boring games of hard to get. I'm very busy and don't have time to play with you. I opened my mouth, but my throat felt like it had swallowed a blade, dry and painful. I waved my hand at him, indicating that I couldn't speak. But he looked disappointed. Celia Murphy, you're always like this, acting superior. It's really annoying. I was furious, pushed him aside, and walked away on my own. For a long time after that, Travis avoided me whenever he saw me, no matter how I called him from behind, he didn't respond. Sophia said we were a pair of happy enemies, loving and hating each other. This made Travis extremely angry. He said, who wants to be happy enemies with her? I was sad for a long time. Why is he always so impatient with me? When I woke up, there were still cold tear stains at the corners of my eyes, and my eyelids were swollen. Even with heavy eye makeup, Gloria at the flower shop noticed right away. Celia, where did you go to party last night? Your eyes look terrible. She teased with a smile, but her tone was full of concern. Gloria had been working part-time at the flower shop since it opened a few months ago. This flower shop was a reward I asked for after helping Travis acquire that tech company. My childhood dream was to open a flower shop when I grew up. Every day, I would be surrounded by flowers, drinking coffee and basking in the sun, enjoying life to the fullest. Later, Gloria, who shared the same passion, came to work at my shop. She is a typical post-2000s kid, outgoing, sharp-tongued, and incredibly perceptive despite her young age. Besides the flower shop, we had no other circles in common. Suddenly, I felt the urge to share the words I had been holding back for years with someone. So, I hung a closed sign on the shop, then went to brew a pot of coffee. Where should I start these stories? Probably from the summer when I was 18. That summer changed the trajectory of all our lives. That summer, Travis's mother suddenly came back. She probably heard that the previous debts had been paid off and Travis was doing well, having been accepted into a top university. But she was suddenly diagnosed with cancer and wanted to reclaim the son she had abandoned before she died. I wouldn't allow it. Why did she abandon Travis when he had nothing, and now that he could spread his wings, she wanted to become his burden? So, I arranged to meet her at a cafe and gave her $100,000 to stay away from Travis. You don't understand his struggles. This money isn't much, but it's enough for a while. Don't disturb Travis. The woman's greedy face showed through the two stacks of bills. Travis has been with your family for so many years, and he's likely to take care of your father in the future. Such a good son for your family, 100,000? Not enough. Give more, or I'll ask Travis for it. Anger surged within me. Where would he get money to give you? Other than tuition, Travis never took money from my father. He earned his living and pocket money through part-time jobs. This woman only saw Travis living in a mansion without knowing how sensitive and fragile her son was inside. 
He's just a foster child in our family. Not my father's real son. As I said this, the doorbell behind me rang. I turned around. Travis stood there, pale, with an expression of sorrow I had never seen before in his eyes. Celia Murphy, I know my place. You don't have to keep reminding me. He walked over and put the $100,000 back into my handbag. Take the money back. I'll find a way to deal with her illness myself. I hurriedly tried to stop him. Don't be stubborn. Where would you get the money? I said I'll find a way. His eyes were crimson as he shouted at me. He had never been like this before. I saw Sophia behind him and my anger flared up. I told you not to tell him I was meeting this woman. Why can't you keep anything to yourself? Sophia shrank back, but she's Travis's mother. He has the right to know everything. How can you just ignore? I stormed out, pushing the door open in anger. I didn't notice the speeding car at the intersection. I only felt a sudden push on my back, and I fell to the ground. When I heard the screeching brakes and Travis's painful cry, I turned back. I saw Sophia, who had chased after me, being thrown into the air and landing heavily. Underneath her, a large pool of blood slowly spread out. Travis rushed to her side, trembling as he checked her breath. Then he looked up at me. Celia Murphy. He gritted his teeth, his voice filled with anguish, and the fury in his eyes seemed to want to tear me apart. Then what happened? What happened next? Gloria asked me eagerly. I lowered my head and took a sip of coffee. Next? What happened next, even Travis didn't know. The person who hit and killed Sophia was a well-known rich second generation in our city. That day, the rich second generation had just come out of a bar after an all-nighter. In a state of drowsiness and drunkenness, that person didn't see Sophia and me rushing out. The rich second generation's father offered five million to settle with us. I crumpled the check into a ball and threw it at that middle-aged man's face. We don't need money. What we want is a life for a life. The middle-aged man wasn't angry, he even smiled. Young lady, don't be so hot-tempered. Spare others when possible. After all, my child didn't do it on purpose. Besides, my family's new car is also totaled. Absolutely shameless. We appealed repeatedly, but were told there wasn't enough evidence. Not long after, my dad's company inexplicably started receiving a large number of order cancellations. Goods piled up in the warehouse and couldn't be sold even at a loss. A business partner who had a good relationship with my dad hinted to him. Mr. Murphy, better to live to fight another day, don't go head to head with people. Soon after, the workers in the factory couldn't get their wages and started causing trouble. The few leading the trouble looked unfamiliar. I watched helplessly as my dad was beaten bloody by those people and fell into a coma. That was the first time I saw the darkness of the real world. After sending my dad to the hospital, I went to see that middle-aged man. He had a confident and determined smile on his face. Young lady, I knew you would come to me once you figured things out. He threw another check at me. The right price at the right time. Now, this is what you're worth. Two million. I clutched the check tightly, my eyes stinging, unable to say a word. Thinking of my dad in the hospital and the workers who couldn't get their wages. In the end, I took the check and signed the settlement agreement. I used the money to pay the workers' wages, cover my dad's medical expenses, and gave some to Travis to treat his mother's illness. At that time, he was just a freshman in college. Even if he scrimped and saved and worked two jobs a day, it was still a drop in the bucket for his mother's illness. Travis questioned where I got so much money. I took out the signed and stamped settlement agreement. He was shocked. You signed this? Yes. What else could I do? Should I just watch my dad get beaten to death? He pointed at me with his index finger. Celia Murphy, spending your sister's blood money, can your conscience handle it? I slapped his hand away. I'm sorry, but we have to survive first. He looked at me with disappointment, then threw the money in my face. This is Sophia's blood money, I can't take it, and I don't deserve it. I watched his resolute back as he left, my chest aching so much that I bent over. Huge tears fell as I squatted down, crying while picking up the money. 
A child passing by asked his mother curiously. Mom, this sister has so much money to treat her illness, why is she still crying? His mother covered his mouth and hurried away. Since that day, I never saw Travis again. I heard that his mother's condition worsened that summer and she died after a failed resuscitation during a critical illness. Although my dad later woke up, he had a head injury that left him unable to speak clearly and half of his body paralyzed. We sold the Murphy family mansion, but the money wasn't enough to pay off the supplier's debts. Having no other choice, I had to dissolve and close the factory. When moving, I found that all of Travis's belongings in our house were gone. The next time I heard about him was eight years later. He had become the youngest business tycoon in our city. Before my dad passed away, he saw the news about him on TV. After some effort, he got Travis's contact and met with him. My dad, speaking and gesturing, said that his biggest worry in this life was me. He asked Travis to take care of me in memory of the years we grew up together. Travis, holding a cigarette, didn't speak until it burned to the end. I will marry her. My dad closed his eyes in peace. All the funeral arrangements were handled by Travis, including paying off our previous debts. Later, we had this marriage in name only. But just a year in, I caught Travis cheating with that young model. Simply because the young model's eyes resembled those of 18-year-old Sophia who died. Travis doesn't know about what happened afterward. Your dad went to the hospital, the factory workers were causing trouble. And you, an 18-year-old girl, if you didn't sign that settlement agreement, how could you have money to pay for the medical bills and workers' wages? I shook my head, he doesn't know. That summer, because he had to accompany his mother for chemotherapy, he was almost always at the hospital taking care of her. He didn't know about the issues at our factory or my dad going to the hospital. Then why didn't you explain it to him? Gloria looked at me with frustration. Do people your age not talk? Do you all think the other person can read your mind? You don't say anything and expect the other person to understand? I gave a bitter smile. Do you think I didn't explain it to him? I did, but he didn't accept my explanation. He said in that situation, we could have applied for corporate bankruptcy and liquidation. The company's machines, equipment, and the pile of goods in the warehouse could all be used to pay off debts. But I insisted on signing that settlement agreement. I did it just to get the money. Blame it on my youth, being too dependent on my dad. I never learned how to run the company properly from my dad. I really didn't know there were other ways. At that time, I was indeed desperate for money. If my dad hadn't fallen into a coma and gone to the hospital, maybe I wouldn't have taken that step. But everything seemed to be predestined. Gloria sighed. But no matter what, since you two are already married, he should be responsible to you and the marriage. Hey, that's not right. A voice came from the flower shop in trance. Gloria stood up. Sorry, ladies, the shop is temporarily closed. If you need to order flowers, please call the number at the door later. I put down my coffee and turned around. Two people were flanking Iris Patel, who was smiling brightly at the door. No matter when in life, everyone has the right to pursue true love. Miss Murphy, don't you think so? Iris said as she walked in and looked around. Not bad, the decor is quite tasteful, and the flowers are well maintained. But her follower a wrinkled her nose. Iris, if you want flowers, just ask Mr. Howard to fly them in from Ecuador. Why come to such an unknown small flower shop? What good flowers can there be here? Iris smiled, you don't understand, Miss Murphy and Travis are old acquaintances. I'm here to support Miss Murphy's business. At this point, Gloria, being the perceptive person she is, understood everything. We don't do business with this lady here, please leave immediately. Follower B was unhappy. What kind of attitude is that? Don't you know all the properties on the street belong to Mr. Howard? Iris is Mr. Howard's darling, if you offend her, we'll tell Mr. Howard and he'll take back the property, leaving you with no business to run. Gloria folded her arms and coldly laughed. If you have the guts, go ahead and tell him. Let's see if our shop closes first or you get out first. Open your eyes and see clearly, this is Mrs. Howard's flower shop. You're causing trouble right in front of the owner, who gave you the nerve. If you know what's good for you, 
Get out now. The two followers had a moment of panic on their faces, they nudged Iris's arm. Iris was unfazed. Miss Murphy, I really don't understand, what's the point of a woman staying with a husband who doesn't love her? I coldly replied. Seeing someone else want him but being unable to get him, tell me, isn't that satisfying? Iris quickly splashed the remaining half cup of coffee on the table onto my face. He doesn't love you, why are you so shameless, clinging to the position of Mrs. Howard? The coffee splashed onto my hair and clothes, making me look dirty and miserable. I wiped the coffee stains off my face expressionlessly, then lifted my leg and kicked Iris hard in the stomach. It's not that I want to cling to the position of Mrs. Howard, it's that the man who supposedly doesn't love me refuses to divorce. If you can convince him to change his mind, I would really thank you. And have I given you face? How dare you come to my place and act up? She fell to the ground, knocking over the flower bouquets around her. Travis had just reached the door, saw the scene, and walked in. Iris was sitting on the ground, clutching her stomach, looking up at him with a tearful face. Travis helped her up and coldly asked. Who did this? Iris's two followers hurried over, adding fuel to the fire by describing how I had bullied Iris Patel. And Iris, nestled in Travis's arms, was crying like a pear blossom bathed in rain. Gloria looked at me with a worried expression. Actually, I couldn't wait for Travis to get angry. I had hurt his little sweetheart, and if he got angry enough to divorce me, I wouldn't lose anything. But he didn't. Not only did he not get angry, he didn't even frown. He held Iris's shoulder and said gently, You have always been obedient and sensible. Sweetie, didn't you want to buy flowers? I'll buy all the flowers in this shop and give them to you, okay? Gloria couldn't hold back and questioned him. Mr. Howard! Shouldn't you care about your wife before comforting this lady? Can't you see she's covered in coffee? Travis lowered his head and took out a black card from his jacket pocket, handing it to Gloria. Mrs. Howard is used to being proud and never lowers her noble head easily. If she knew how to soften up, I wouldn't mind supporting her. You! I grabbed the furious Gloria and reached out to take the card from Travis's hand. Gloria, go and arrange all the intact bouquets in the shop. Mr. Howard is generously expressing his love, and we can make money too. Why not? I smiled as I swiped the card and handed over a pen and paper. Please, Mr. Howard, leave your delivery address and phone number. We'll make sure to deliver these flowers to you by tonight. Travis stared at me for a moment with his dark eyes, brewing emotions I couldn't read. No need. You know the home address best, don't you? Tonight, I want to give Iris the most romantic two-person world. I hope Mrs. Howard will be sensible enough not to disturb us. Iris Patel's eyes suddenly lit up. Travis took her out of the flower shop, leaving Gloria and me facing this mess. Suddenly, Gloria started doing stretches on the spot. Celia, warm up too, let's get to work. With all these flowers, we've got a tough job ahead. But with so many flowers, it must be four or five hundred thousand. Did you really charge that much from your husband's card? I winked at her. I charged an extra one hundred thousand. Labor and delivery aren't free, you know? You really got him. I laughed heartily, but the moment I turned around, tears fell uncontrollably. I knew this time, I was going to say goodbye to Travis for good. That night, I spent the whole night in the flower shop. I watched as the sky gradually brightened. From the front desk drawer, I took out half a pack of cigarettes left by a previous customer. I lit one and took a puff. It was choking. But somehow, it woke me up. The last time I saw Travis smoking, I had wanted to try it. Under what circumstances did he start smoking his first cigarette? Was it like me today, with every puff accompanied by a sigh? After finishing the cigarette, I got up, changed clothes, and did my makeup. I took a taxi back to the villa. The villa's lights were off. But with the daylight, I could clearly see the villa was filled with fresh flowers. The curtains in the master bedroom on the second floor were tightly drawn. It seemed Travis really had a romantic night. I lit another cigarette. The choking taste spread in my mouth. Instantly, it brought tears to my eyes. 
At the villa's entrance, there was a noisy commotion. Several reporters with cameras were trying to force their way in. Travis's driver stood at the door, sternly warning that if they tried to enter, he would call the police. I stood quietly by for a few minutes. Finally, I saw a middle-aged couple hurrying out of a car towards the villa. I dropped the half-smoked cigarette and crushed it under my foot. I walked towards the couple. Are you Iris Patel's parents? I brought them into the villa. Travis's driver had a look of guilt and shock on his face. It was quite amusing. The stairs leading to the second floor were also filled with flowers. From a distance, we heard Iris's crying. The middle-aged couple's faces changed. The woman was the first to shout Iris and rushed over. Then, I heard the sound of slaps and curses. When I reached the master bedroom door, I saw Travis being pushed out, looking disheveled with nail marks all over his face. He was shirtless, and the ambiguous kiss marks on his neck and chest were clearly visible. Travis saw me and, trembling, tentatively tried to grab my hand. Celia. I shook him off hard. Disgusting. His face turned pale instantly. Celia, I don't know how it turned out like this. I didn't want to be with her, but I drank too much, and I don't remember anything that happened after. I sneered, so if you hadn't given her the chance to be alone with you, none of this would have happened, right? Travis suddenly got angry. And you? You knew Iris and I were at the villa yesterday, so why didn't you come to find me? Why didn't you stop it? Do you even consider me your husband? He squeezed my neck hard, forcing me to look into his eyes. I chuckled, husband? Travis Howard, since the day you cheated with Iris Patel, you no longer deserve that title. I shook off his hand and walked straight into the bedroom. The bed was in disarray. Two wine glasses and an open condom box were scattered on the bedside table. It made me feel nauseous. Iris Patel was naked, wrapped only in a sheet, crying in her mother's arms with her face covered. But there was no trace of sadness on her face. I saw a ring on her hand. It was my mother's blue diamond ring that I had kept in the safe. All the blood in my body rushed to my head. Seeing me staring at her hand, Iris looked down at the ring and then sobbed. Last night, Travis insisted on putting this ring on my finger. He said it's mine and I shouldn't take it off. I glanced back at Travis, my eyes burning with anger as if I wanted to set him on fire. Iris continued to show off. Actually, this diamond isn't that big, and the style is quite old-fashioned. I said I didn't want it, but he still, ah. I grabbed her wrist tightly, trying to take the ring back. Iris's mother pushed me. Who are you? Let go of my daughter. How can you be so much like a robber, just grabbing other people's things? Get lost. It's mine. I slapped the woman aside and then forcefully pried open Iris's right hand. The ring was a bit tight on her finger. It took a lot of effort to take it off. Iris and her mother hugged each other and cried, and her mother yelled at Travis at the door. Are you a man or not? Your woman is being bullied, and you just stand there and watch. I don't care, you have to give our Iris an explanation today. Otherwise, we won't let you off. Travis looked at the woman coldly. How much do you want? A million? Two million? Name your price. Iris's mother spat. Two million to get rid of us? I spit on that. You have to marry our Iris. She's never even been in a relationship before, and you think you can just sleep with her and not take responsibility? No way. I put the ring in my pocket, turned around, and looked at Travis at the door, who had a look of despair on his face, and smiled happily. Today I'm here to officially discuss our divorce. It looks like your situation here is quite urgent. Mr. Howard, why don't we sit down and sign the divorce papers? Iris Patel's parents are not easy to deal with. They threatened that if Travis did not marry Iris, they would notify the reporters outside and accuse Travis of rape. In the end, Travis signed the divorce agreement. In that divorce agreement, I originally only wanted that blue diamond ring. But Travis added a clause at the end of the agreement. He gave me half of his savings. Since he was so generous, wouldn't it be ungrateful of me not to accept it? 
When he signed the last word, he seemed to lose all his strength and threw the pen away. Satisfied, I put the agreement in my bag, stood up, and left. Celia, he called me, did you bring Iris's parents and the reporters outside? I paused for a moment but still didn't turn back. You're so smart, since you've already guessed it all, why bother asking me? Travis gave a bitter smile, to divorce me, you really used all means possible. Well, I have to thank you for giving me this opportunity. Celia! He called me again, his voice trembling a bit. I just want to know, in the year we've been married, did you ever, ever love me? I turned around and looked at this man I had secretly liked since I was nine years old. Suddenly, I felt that from the time we met, to our separation, to our marriage and divorce. It seemed that we never really had a proper conversation. Travis, I've liked you since I first saw you when I was nine. His eyebrows twitched suddenly. I did confess to you, but how did you respond? You told me not to mess with you. You never believed that I really liked you. At 17, I gave Travis hot chocolate, forcing him to drink it in front of me before letting him go. Then, just as he took his first sip, I suddenly confessed to him. Travis, I like you. He choked and coughed repeatedly. I hurriedly patted his back. But he looked at me as if he had seen a ghost. Don't mess with me, okay? His face was flushed, but his tone was cold. Celia Murphy, I'm not a spoiled rich kid, I don't have time to play these boring games with you. Whether at 17 or 27, he never believed that I liked him. Between him and me, it was never a matter of who would lower their head first. His heart was trapped in an invisible glass dome. Trying to break that glass dome would cause shards to hurt both of us. Travis's eyes turned red. He looked at me, opened his mouth, but didn't say anything. When I went downstairs and walked out of the villa, Iris's father blocked my way. He looked at me with a gloomy expression. Young lady, it's been a long time. A month later, Travis and I got our divorce certificate at the Civil Affairs Bureau. Iris came with him. She leaned on Travis's shoulder, looking at me smugly. Miss Murphy, Travis and I have scheduled our wedding for the 6th of next month. If you have time, please come. I'll send you an invitation. She smiled and touched her belly. I'm pregnant. Travis said we should have the wedding now before my belly gets too big, so I won't be too tired later. Congratulations, I said sincerely. I wish you a lifetime of happiness and many children. Which hotel is the wedding at? I'll make sure to arrive early. Iris was stunned for a moment, then muttered, crazy. She turned and got into the car, while Travis still stood in front of me, his face pale. Celia, do you really not care that I'm marrying another woman and having a child with her? I remained silent. Travis suddenly raised his voice, his expression both desperate and hurt. Why? Why are you always so aloof? Clearly, if you had just lowered your stance a bit, if you had just said you liked me a few more times, I would have believed you. But you were always impatient. When I said I hated you, you really just turned and left. Iris certainly wouldn't really send me an invitation. But I still arrived at the hotel early that day. Watching her hold Travis's arm, smiling so sweetly. I felt even more delighted inside. Laugh. Laugh all you want. Soon, you won't be able to laugh anymore. Iris is a model and already has some fame. She's marrying the youngest business tycoon in the city. This wedding is far more grand and high profile than the one last year when Travis married me. 200,000 Aurora Roses airlifted from Ecuador decorated the entire wedding scene, making it look like a dream. Four drones were filming this grand wedding from various angles. Travis remained expressionless throughout, as if this grand wedding had nothing to do with him. And Iris was holding a microphone, sweetly sharing with the guests bits and pieces of her and Travis's acquaintance. Suddenly, her microphone emitted a sharp buzz. Then, a conversation abruptly interrupted. Young lady, you meticulously arranged all this, what exactly is your purpose? I don't believe you genuinely want to fulfill your husband and my daughter Iris. The guests below were in an uproar, looking at each other. What's going on? Did the person inside say her husband? Did Mr. Howard get married before? Someone who knew the situation said. 
There were rumors in the circle that Mr. Howard got married last year, but we never saw his wife. We all thought it was a misunderstanding or that she was confused with today's bride. But now it seems, this bride interfered with Mr. Howard's marriage? Ah. Isn't that being a mistress? Iris's face changed color. The conversation continued to broadcast. I just want to divorce Travis Howard, whether or not it fulfills someone, I don't care. Mr. Patel, there's no need to be anxious, not many people remember that Iris Patel killed my sister back then. You dare bring that up? Back then, you already signed the settlement agreement, my daughter did nothing wrong. If you weren't guilty, why did you rush to send her abroad back then? It's an indisputable fact that Iris Patel killed someone while drunk. Mr. Patel, you were so powerful back then, you forced my father and me to a dead end. Could we have survived without signing the settlement agreement? I had no choice but to sign. The hotel manager rushed over and urgently shut down the equipment. But the information that needed to be released had already been released. Reporters covering the wedding also turned their cameras towards Iris and Travis. Mrs. Howard, do you have anything to add regarding the hit and run case mentioned just now? It was said that you were driving under the influence, is that true? Mr. Howard, did you know about Mrs. Howard's drunk driving incident that resulted in a death beforehand? Iris anxiously clutched Travis's sleeve. Travis, help me. But Travis shook her off. His bloodshot eyes stared fiercely at Iris in front of him. You are the one who killed Sophia back then? Iris was frightened by his expression, she cried and shook her head. Sophia? Who is that? I don't know. I only know I didn't do it on purpose, those two people suddenly rushed out, they didn't see the car. It has nothing to do with me. The guests below were already in an uproar. She's admitting it. She drove drunk and hit someone, how is that different from intentional murder? What's worse is they even threatened the victim's family. I really don't understand why Mr. Howard would marry such a woman. It seems the person she hit was the sister of Mr. Howard's previous wife. What? He cheated, and the mistress turns out to be the one who killed his wife's sister? This is bullying. I stood in a corner of the hotel, watching Travis shake off Iris and stride off the stage. Watching Iris scream heart-wrenchingly for him. Watching the swarm of reporters taking photos, dirtying her pristine wedding dress, knocking the $18,000 bouquet of Duchess Roses out of her hand. Trampling, crushing, grinding into a mess of petals. It was truly satisfying. The tech company I acquired back then was actually Iris's father's company. Their business had been declining year after year, so I took the opportunity to swallow up her father's company entirely. Seeing their family lose everything was a way to avenge Sophia. But I didn't expect that their family's downfall would force Iris, who had been hiding abroad, to return. Even more surprising, she signed with Travis's company and caught his eye. That year, she hit Sophia with her car and only took a quick glance before driving away in a hurry. Maybe that's why Travis didn't recognize her. But I saw her. Her face, and those eyes that were so similar to Sophia's, I could never forget. Later, when Travis said he wanted to spend some alone time with her in the villa, I knew the opportunity had come. Nothing can destroy a person's sanity more than falling from heaven to hell in an instant. The highly anticipated mistress of the Howard group turned out to be a murderer. Such a scandalous secret wouldn't need me to speak out, those reporters would naturally dig it up to death. Soon, all of Iris's modeling jobs were urgently halted. The announcement was made that such a disreputable artist must be completely banned. The public pressure brought that old case back to light. Drunk driving, hit and run, bribery, each charge was enough to land her in jail for several years. When the police came to arrest her, Iris was so scared and nervous that she turned and ran. While crossing the street, she was hit by a car that couldn't break in time. A large pool of blood spread beneath her. When the taxi came, 911 brushed past me. Gloria helped me put my luggage into the taxi and then hugged me. Celia, have a safe trip. Call me when you arrive. I nodded. There was nothing in the city worth my attachment or nostalgia anymore. I booked a ticket to K-City. I heard that place is surrounded by flowers all year round. I contracted a flower field there. From now on, I'll just grow flowers, drink tea, 
and live my own carefree life. When the plane broke through the clouds, my heart suddenly raced a few times. It felt a bit uncomfortable. A flight attendant considerately brought me a cup of hot water. Miss, get some sleep. There's still more than an hour before we land. I nodded. Outside the plane, a thousand rays of golden light pierced through the clouds. I wrapped the blanket around myself tightly and fell into a deep sleep. Travis Howard's Extra Story After Iris's matter was exposed by the media, her parents came to the house every day, crying and making a scene. He responded to them with a cold face, saying he had no way to help Iris. Ridiculous. At this moment, not stepping on her would be considered his mercy. He never would have thought that she was the one who killed Sophia all those years ago. The house was noisy, and reporters were camping at the company. He was extremely annoyed. He drove out, aimlessly wandering through the city. Unconsciously, he arrived at the entrance of Celia's flower shop. The inside was almost empty. His heart tightened, and he hurriedly got out of the car and pushed the door open. A girl was packing up the last of the things. Hearing the noise, she turned around and, seeing him, her expression froze. He remembered her. She was the girl who helped out at Celia's shop. But Celia was nowhere to be seen. He suddenly had a bad premonition. Where is she? Where is Celia? The girl originally didn't want to say much, but couldn't resist his repeated pleas and finally spoke. Celia just left. Her flight today is to K-City. She probably won't come back. She said there's nothing and no one worth her staying for in the city anymore. A sharp pain struck his heart. He stumbled out the door, immediately got into the car, and sped towards the airport. There was only one thought in his mind. Keep her, keep her. Even if it meant letting her slap him, even if he had to kneel and beg her, it was fine. As long as she was willing to stay, stay by his side. He wouldn't be stubborn anymore. He wanted to tell her that actually, in his youth, she repeatedly appeared in his dreams. But at that time, he was too self-abased. Just like Celia said, he had nothing, not even money for food, relying on her father's support. How could someone like him be liked by such a dazzling girl? But she kept coming to tease him. He almost believed she really liked him. But that day, he heard her true thoughts in the cafe. She said he was just a foster child in their family. His hope was once again extinguished. Later, because of the settlement agreement Celia signed, they completely broke apart. He hated Celia, hated her for forgiving the person who killed Sophia for money. He also hated himself, hated himself for having nothing, not even the capital to ask her not to sign. Later, he spent eight years, finally becoming wealthy. Celia's family had nothing, lost their former glory. For Mr. Murphy's dying wish, and also for his own selfish reasons. He married Celia. She had lost her former pride, and also her former liveliness. Later, he met Iris in the company. For a moment, he was dazed. Such beautiful and spirited features, especially those lively eyes, reminded him so much of the young Celia. But she was much more shy and gentle than Celia. When she called him Mr. Howard with her head lowered, his heart skipped a beat. He pampered Iris, enjoying her demure demeanor while trying to find traces of Celia in her. But he didn't expect that this seemingly harmless little bunny would set him up. He wondered, when Celia recognized Iris as the one who killed Sophia, why didn't she tell him? He would have definitely stood by her side. But she didn't tell him. She didn't trust him. She preferred to use him as bait to set up a trap to expose Iris. He was wrong. Is it so hard to open your heart to the one you love? Why did he waste so much time testing Celia's feelings? Couldn't he bravely say that he loved her first? It's okay. He told himself, it's not too late now. Travis accelerated towards the airport. The car drove onto the bridge across the river. Travis kept changing lanes, overtaking cars. Thinking, faster, faster. He didn't notice he was already on the opposite lane. He glanced at the time, almost out of time. Suddenly, he heard urgent honking. He looked up in panic, only to see a truck speeding towards him from the opposite lane. His face changed drastically, and he quickly turned the steering wheel, trying to avoid the oncoming vehicle. The car instantly lost balance. It broke through the railing on the side. 
Travis only felt a sense of weightlessness. His mind went blank. Seconds later, he and the car plunged into the rushing the river. As the water flooded over his head, he seemed to hear the roar of a plane. Was it still too late? His tears mixed with the river water. It's said that before one dies, they see the person they most want to see. Travis closed his eyes. But Celia, why didn't you come?